Scott with FDJtool.com, and I've got the belt sander from Wolf Tools. It's an incredibly amazing tool. When you find out what this will do, you're probably going to want to run out and get one right on your bench immediately. It's an amazing tool that allows you to do all kinds of abrasive work, and you can use that abrasive work to clean up your castings, to remove sprues, you can use it to shape metal and wax, you can sharpen knives, gravers. Probably your limit imagination is only going to be the limitations of what the belt sander can do. So when you open it up, you get the belt sander body. This is what does all the work. It's powered by your flex shaft machine, which makes it perfect for the jeweler's workbench. You also get a clamp that allows you to put it on to any edge of the table, bench, anything like that. You're going to get a couple of uh, Allen wrenches to do your adjusting. You're going to get a vacuum hose attachment, which I'll talk about later. And you're also going to get an assortment of Ruby abrasive bands that are general purpose bands that allow you to get started and find out just how wonderful the belt sander is. You can order extra abrasives later, but let's go ahead and set this up and we're going to show you exactly how it works. The body of the Wolf belt sander is all aluminum construction. It's very compact, very easy to use and set up. You have a Quick connect here on the end is where that's where your drive shaft of your flex shaft goes. That's why it's perfect to have on a jeweler's workbench. Because that quick connect here is what connects to the drive wheel that runs the, the abrasive band. The drive wheel is on one side, you've got a roller on the other, and in the center you've got a tensioning wheel. And that tensioning wheel is what keeps the band taut while you're using it. So to take an abrasive band and put it on the machine, simply slide it over the front drive wheel. Whoops just like that there it's going to go over top this work surface here and underneath this metal guide it's going to go around the tension wheel and around the roller in the back just like so very simple it's rolling and all we have to do is tighten it now this tensioning wheel is tightened by a set screw that's in the back of the uh, the belt sander here so all you really need to do is just put a little tension on it with your finger just so like that Turn it around, take your large Allen wrench, and go ahead and just give it a quick tighten here. Like that, there we go. Tension's good, rolls great, now we're ready to use it. So let's go ahead and set our clamp up. The clamp is very easy and very handy to have. It has an opening here that allows you to connect it to a workbench or table that's up to about an inch and a half in, dot, in uh, thickness. rather. The top part is where the adjustments are made for holding your belt sander. You've got a black knob on the top here that when you loosen it, it gives you incredible mobility. You can move it around like this. You can move the top rod back and forth. So it gives you a great versatility in how you want to set it up when you get it into place. So I'm going to tighten it right here so I can get it mounted. Now normally I would clamp this onto the edge of the table here, but I've got a bench pin that's right in the center of uh, where all my, my workbench is here, and that's a great spot for me to go ahead and clamp this onto, so it's right in the center for me to use. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it on right there. There we go. Just like that. And now we want to set our our mounting rod in place here. It's important when you set up the mounting rod here because the mounting rod has a flat spot on one side of it here and that's important to know because on your body of your belt sander here you've got a screw on the back here and this screw is what locks into place onto this mounting rod so you want to make sure that when you set your belt sander in place on top of this wheel that the flat spot lines up with that mounting screw that's on the side of your your uh, belt sander here. So I'm going to go ahead and set that flat spot to, facing to my right here. Lock it into place so it's nice and secure. Go ahead find that mounting hole on there. Go ahead and slide it right over top of the mounting rod there like so. Take my small Allen wrench and go ahead and tighten that down. There we go locked in place and we're ready to use it. So all we now have to do is set up our flex shaft. And it's quite easy to do because all you have to do is remove the handpiece and set that aside. And that exposes the drive shaft from your flex shaft. And that's what's going to go ahead and fit into the quick connect here on the, uh, the belt sander. This little part here is called the, uh, the drive key and that has a little uh, little flange here on the end and that's going to fit into a slot on the inside of here just like it fits into a little slot that's on the inside of your flex shaft. So 
as connecting a, a handpiece, we're going to go ahead and give our handpiece just a slight spin so that it helps it line up. I'm going to insert in there and boom, it's connected and ready to go. So we'll go ahead and get our safety glasses on and we're going to show you just how easy it is to use. Using the Wolf belt sander couldn't be easier. This top portion here, great for flat items. I've got a ring here that I want to even out the edge on. So I simply fire up the flex shaft, get it to a good speed, hold it flat against the band. I want to keep the ring moving back and forth. If I hold it in one spot particularly long, I just end up wearing out the belt in one spot. Keep it moving. And like so, get a great even finish on the ring. Also too, speed is not going to help you. If you fire up the flex shaft at full speed, that's not going to make it work better. All you're going to do is end up wearing out your belt. Get it to a nice even speed, and then let the belt do the work. Move it back and forth, and you're going to have a lot better results. Should you need to do uh, the outside of the ring, other items like that, you can always use the end of the belt sander too. This back here against the, the uh, roller wheel at the end here, simply hold your ring like this. Again, get it to a decent speed, keep the item moving. There we go. And you get a great finish, you can do a lot of pieces at the end there like that. But there's more to it as well. You can use other portions of the sander as well. And I'm going to have to move it just a second here. Let me loosen the clamp like so. Move it over here so I've got a little bit extra room. There we go. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the sander. so that I can use the bottom portion of it. Because on the bottom here, you've got a little little uh, loose tension here that allows you to do curve things much better like this ring by holding them against this portion here. It flexes a little bit and it allows you to move it around and work with curved items much more easily. Like so. And also, too, you've got this area over here where you've got some space underneath. So if you've got something that has a split in it, like this ring that I intend on soldering together later, I can use this belt here to sand the inside of the slit like this. Again, not applying too much pressure. I'm just letting the, the abrasive do the work. And that way I can sand the insides of areas like this in order to get them clean and flush and meet perfectly like that. This is an incredible tool. Imagine the things you can do with a Wolf Belt Sander. When using your Wolf Belt Sander, you have a variety of abrasives to choose from. You can use things such as the 3M Trizac abrasive or the 3M Cubitron abrasives. These two abrasives are very aggressive. They remove a lot of metal, so that makes them perfect for doing things such as grinding down sprues, cleaning up your castings, or pre-polish work. You can also use abrasives such as the 3M Microfinish or the 3M Diamond Microfinish abrasives. These Abrasives are very fast, very consistent, and very precise abrasives. Great for mid to final polishing. Finally, you can use things such as these ruby abrasives. These are the bands that come with your wolf sander. They are wonderful because as a general purpose abrasive, they come not only in a variety of grits, but they can be used on a variety of, of materials such as metal, stones, plastic, fiberglass, you name it, you can probably use it with the ruby abrasives. So with this variety, I think that the belt sander from Wolf is going to cover a lot of jobs at your workbench and make your life a lot easier. Sure, the Wolf belt sander is an awesome tool, but you know what? There's a few other things that are awfully cool too. 
One of those things is to add an EM Fordham speed control to your Flickshaft machine. And what does that do? Well, this little dial control will limit the speed at which your motor spins. Because as we talked about earlier, spinning this belt sander really, really fast doesn't do the work any better. It just wears out your belts. So what do we do with this? Well, we attach it in between the motor and the foot pedal. So I take my power cord from my motor and I plug it into the EM controller. Like so. Then I take the output power of the EM controller and I plug it into my foot pedal. Now I can control just how fast the motor spins. So if I dial it slow and press on the foot pedal, it spins very, very slowly. I can speed it up a little bit and get a very nice consistent speed. I don't have to worry about my foot going up and down on the foot pedal and varying the speed as I work. I can press it all the way down and get one continuous speed for fantastic results. If I really wanted to, sure, I could dial it all the way up to the max, but as we saw earlier, that's not always the best thing to do. Slow and steady wins the race, and a good speed will give you good results on your flex shaft. For those of you with a GRS Benchmate, I've got a little surprise for you. I'm going to go ahead and remove the body of the belt sander from the mounting clamp. Set it aside here. And go ahead and just take the whole bench pin and clamp away. And put my Benchmate in place. Now, all I really need to do is take away the ring holder part of my Benchmate and insert the available adapter that Wolf Tool has available. It has a mounting rod that fits, look at there, right into the bottom of our sanding body. It's got a flat spot on the side that we can tighten in place with our Allen wrench. Now we've got complete flexibility and mobility that we had with our Benchmate. Couldn't be easier. Remember at the beginning of the video when I showed you that hose adapter that came in the box? Well, here's where I'm going to show you what it does. I'm going to loosen our sanding body from the mounting rod. And I'm going to turn it on the side here so I have access to the front. There's two mounting holes that line up perfectly with our hose adapter. There are also two screws that come in the box that I'm going to attach it with. Like so. Go ahead and tighten them down. And what you've done is you would allowed yourself to attach a two inch flexible hose to the end of your belt sander. You can use that hose to, to use in conjunction with a shop vac or other vacuum tool in order to collect all the dust and debris that you're going to make while sanding. Go ahead and return this back to the mounting rod. Tighten it in place. And when you've got your suction hose in place, you can keep yourself and your workplace nice and clean. That's awesome. So there you have it, the Wolf Belt Sander. It's versatile, it's easy to use, and it is a must to have on your workbench. My name is Scott with FDJTool.com. You can use other portions of the sander as well. I'm stuck. You can't remember. The Wolf Bolts. My name is Scott with FDJTool.com.